Hey everyone, it's Kelly. I'm back today with a double page 12 by 12 Project Life process video. Today I'm going to be documenting week 35 in my 2020 album and I grabbed a bunch of cards from Hip Kit Club, but I'm actually going to be using items from my stash to embellish this spread. So I'm going to be starting by working on the two photos that are in the middle column on opposite ends of my spread. My thought was to create almost a bookend on the spread, so I'm going to trim these photos down and then I'm going to add a pattern to the left side of the photo on the left hand side of the spread and to the right side of the photo on the right hand side of the spread. So it'll make a little bit sense one, more sense once you see it come together. But that's kind of where my idea is. I had a lot of empty space on both of those photos and that's why I chose to put them where I did because I thought that if I added the same pattern paper on both sides of the spread that it would just help tie in the two pages a little bit more. So I started by using a card from my stash. I believe it was a Hip Kit Club card, but it could have been just a random card from somewhere else. And it had this polka dot print on it, and I thought that I would use it, but I actually end up deciding to go with this yellow pattern paper, and that is actually from Citrus Twist. I use the same pattern on the photo that I am cropping down right now, so I'm gonna use that to back this photo. So I'm just trimming down these pictures just to add a little bit more color and I have this collage of my son playing his trumpet. This was the first day he was able to bring his trumpet home from school. It's his first year in band so he was really excited about it. So I took a bunch of photos of him and I chose my three favorite and then I collaged them together on a 4x6 print. But because I had all that extra space at the top, I thought that adding a pattern paper would work great and it would also be a great place for my journaling. So I like all of my photos to have a white border and because I had to trim down these photos, I trimmed off one area of the white border. So I'm just backing them with some cardstock and just trimming it down to roughly the same size as the border on the rest of the photos. Now I have this school theme stamp from Studio Calico and I will have all the stamps that are still available linked in the description box below if you're interested in checking those out. But the stamp said fave subject and then it had different areas that you could check off and my son had just told me how band was his favorite subject and that stamp just happened to fit perfectly there. I did not plan that. It just happened to fit right along that yellow pattern paper. So I went ahead and stamped that down. Whenever I'm getting ready to work on a project life spread, the very first thing that I do is I set out all of my photos on my spread where I think they're gonna go. And then I will go through my stamps to see which stamps fit the theme of my photos. And I just grab a bunch, I don't really, think it out very far. I just think, okay, this'll work, this won't work, this'll work, this won't work. And I make a pile of those stamps. And then once I have my cards and everything kind of laid out, I'll go back through the stamps again to figure out which ones I wanna use out of that pile for the photos that I have. So right now what I'm doing is I am just working on this card. It's going to be of a screenshot of a book that I read and I am actually gonna use the stamps to tell my journaling. So I grabbed a stamp from Kelly Perky. It's an old stamp, it's no longer available. But I think it says grab the Kleenex or something like that because this book was a very emotional book. And then I'm also just using a few other stamps to add additional journaling on that card. So sometimes I'll use my typewriter to add the actual journaling, but in this instance, the stamps fit perfectly and they went ahead and told the story for me. So the next photo that I'm gonna grab is the photo that's in the top right hand corner. And that is a collage of five photos and they were all taken on a Monday evening. I had a bunch of errands that I had to run after work. I typically don't do a lot of errands or a lot of anything other than just coming home and making dinner when I get home. My day is pretty long. I leave my house anywhere between 6.40 and 6.45 in the morning, and on Mondays, I typically don't get home until six that evening. So it's a long day, and I'm usually pretty tired. It's the beginning of the week, so you know it's one of those things that just is what it is. And I went ahead and collaged all of those photos together. They're about two by two sized photos. And then in the sixth box or the sixth area on the photo, I went ahead and added my journaling. I did add a stamp that said tired and happy because it was, again, like I said, a long day, but it was a good day. The photo that I'm working on now is a photo of when I received my 10 pound charm from Weight Watchers. And I'm gonna add a stamp from Studio Calico that says photographic evidence. I stamped it in black initially, but because there was a dark area on my photo, you couldn't see the beginning of the word photographic. 
So I debated on what to do, but I thought, well, let's just go ahead and try stamping white ink on top of the black ink and see what happens. And it actually ended up turning out great. It actually works really well. You can read it. It kind of looks like it has a little bit of a drop shadow to it, which I think is kind of a fun effect. So now I'm going to move on to this photo and it's a little difficult to see, especially probably on camera, but one of the offices that I work at is in the middle of a city, but we have a ton of wildlife around our office and we actually get deer quite a bit in our backyard. And when I pulled into the parking lot, there were three deer in the backyard and I was trying to snap a picture of them without spooking them. So I went ahead and took that picture. They're a little hard to see, but you can see them, especially when you read the journaling, you're able to kind of see what you're looking for. I did add the stamp that says true story onto that photo as well. And it just kind of helps tie in with the theme of the journaling. I did add a little bit of messy machine stitching to those two book end photos again just to help tie in the two parts of the spread and then i typed out some journaling just on some scrap white cardstock and i'm going to add it to that journaling card that says place your photo here or place the photo here i didn't have a photo that i wanted to include there but i did have some more journaling that i wanted to tell and i thought that i could just cover up that sentiment using just some scrap paper now I don't want to cover up the flowers on this card. So what I'm doing is I'm just using my craft knife and I'm just very carefully going to cut around those flowers so I can tuck that scrap piece of white cardstock that has my journaling. I'm going to tuck it back behind those flowers. The flowers will still be visible. It also helps make it look like the journaling is actually meant to be there, that it's actually part of the card. And because the paper that I use to type the journaling is white and the background on the card is white, it's, I mean, you can see that there's pattern or that there's paper on top of the card, but it helps blend in a little bit better since it's white on white. So now comes the time for embellishing, which is my favorite part of any scrapbooking project. And I thought that these cards were really reminiscent of the colors from the Amy Tangerine Picnic in the Park collection. So I grabbed what I had from my stash and I'm just going to add some embellishments here and there. So I used puppy stickers and then I also use the thickers from the collection, the, the ones with the icons on them. And I'm just going around just trying to find different areas to add different pops of color. And again, just to kind of add some embellishing here and there. Now there is this floral sticker that's included in, I think they call it a sticker book, but it's actually just a bunch of sticker sheets. And it was a clear sticker and I was worried that it would get lost on that photo that I had. So I decided to add it just to some vellum and then I'm just gonna fussy cut around it. The vellum gives it enough of a backing that the colors are still true to their actual colors and stand out a little bit more when you layer it on top of something dark or something that has a pattern to it. So next I'm going to go back to the card that I used the craft knife with and I'm actually going to cut around that flower just a little bit more. There was a sticker in that sticker book that they kind of look like washi strips and I wanted to add it to that card just for a little bit more color and I thought that it would look neat if it kind of looked like it ran underneath those flowers. So I just used my craft knife to trim just a little bit more around those flowers so I could tuck that sticker kind of underneath on both sides of the flower. And I just like how it looks. It adds another pop of color and it looks like it flows really well on the card because it looks like it was intended to be there because it looks like it's tucked behind the flowers. So I'm going to keep on working on embellishing this spread. And while I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and walk you through the week. I think that it's helpful to see or helpful to hear, at least it is for me, the types of photos that people include in their project life. So I hope that you enjoy this part of the process where I go through and I talk about the different things that I documented for the week. So next to my title card on the left hand side of the spread, I had been taking photos every week in the morning when I leave for work because it's crazy how fast the light disappears as we move into fall. So I just snapped a picture from inside my car and that just shows, especially when you look at it from the week before, how dark it had gotten in that week. The photo on the left-hand side of the spread in the middle, the one that I created the bookend on, that was a picture that I snapped of my husband when we were at work at the restaurant. I was standing in the doorway and he was busy working, so I just took a picture of that. 
I have the photo that I already talked about. It's the screenshot of the book that I read that I finished this week. And then I just have a filler card that says hot, hot, hot. It was very, very hot this week. The photo on the bottom left-hand side of the spread of the windows inside my house. I snapped that one morning when I woke up because it was so humid. And with our air conditioning running, the windows were so foggy. It was crazy. And they were just really steamed up. So I snapped that picture and I thought that that hot, hot, hot card worked really well with the journaling that I added onto that photo. So going back up to the middle portion of the spread on the left-hand side, I already talked about the card with, or the photo with the deer and the true story and the journaling that I had already added onto there. And what I'm doing now, let me go ahead and talk about what I'm doing now. I am working on my title card and I wasn't sure if I wanted to use these alpha stickers. These are Amy Tangerine stickers as well. They were not part of the Picnic in the Park collection. I've had them in my stash for a really long time. If I can find a link to them, I'll definitely include it. But I wasn't sure if I wanted to use them and I'm always worried about the color on the cards lifting if I pull a sticker off. So what I typically do is I take any stickers that I'm not quite sure of and I'll add them just to a piece of plastic packaging and then I will just kind of position them on the area of the card that I'm wanting to use them and if I like it then I just pull them off the packaging and add them onto the card or onto the photo. My photo paper that I use does not play very well with adhesive so I have to make sure that I'm 100% certain that I want to stick it down before I put any adhesive on my photo. And I'm going to go ahead and just continue on talking what, about what I'm doing right now. I will get back to the week in just a second here. But I wanted to add those same stickers in a few other spots around my spread. So I was trying to look for places to add them. And I actually decided that I'm going to add the word read next to the photo of the book that I read. And then I have a photo on the right-hand side of the spread that is of the book club that I am a part of. I snapped a picture of us when we all met up. And I want to add the words book club, but because these stickers are a little bit transparent, they were getting lost on the photo. So I went through my stash and grabbed a label from Ellie Studio, and I'm going to add the word book club on top of that. But I felt like the color around the edge of the label was just a little bit too bold. So I'm just going to use some vellum to cut around or to add on top of that label just to help mute the color a little bit. I like to use my Xyron sticker maker anytime that I need to add adhesive to vellum. It really just mutes the adhesive. You can't see it at all. And so I just ran that through the sticker maker and I'm going to add that right on top of that label again, just to mute the border of the label a little bit. So that way the title that I add on top of the label really does stand out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and jump back into the week and just talk a little bit more about the stories that I documented. The photo that is on the left-hand side of the spread in the bottom right-hand corner, so in the 4x6 pocket, it is three photos that I took and I collaged them together on a 4x6 print and then added my journaling underneath the photos before I printed the pictures. And it just talks about how um, we live in an older neighborhood and one of our neighbors, she had a bat in her house and her husband was at work and we used to get bats in our house all the time. We had our house bat proofed a few years ago. So we are very well versed in capturing bats in our house. So we have a fishing net that we use to catch them and then we release them outside. So I sent her a text message when I saw she had posted on Facebook that she had a bat in the house and asked if she wanted us to come over. So we went over to her house and I am scared of bats. I'm terrified of them. So I stood outside with her and two of her children while my husband went inside with one of her kids and they caught the bat. So they were just pictures that I took from outside the window looking in of him working on catching that bat. So I just thought it was kind of a funny story. We were very happy to help her out because I know if I would have been in that situation, I would have loved if one of my neighbors would have come over to help me. So that was just what that photo was all about. So let's move over to the right hand side of the spread. I already talked about the pictures of my son with his trumpet. I did add a little bit of journaling underneath there, just talking about how excited he was to bring home his trumpet and how he was telling me all about it. The photo next to that is the photo of the book club that I mentioned. Then I have a filler card on the bottom or on the right hand side in the middle column that just says, oh, what fun. I have the photo of my Weight Watchers charm that I received. The card next to that is that card that I've already talked about numerous times, but the journaling on that card is all about my son being home on Fridays this year. The school has elected to do e-learning each Friday. 
That way they have time to sanitize the school for the fall for the next week. And it's just so strange to me to still have him home on Fridays. We were just a few weeks into school at this point and he had come down into the kitchen and was kind of leaning up against the threshold of the door. And I just, when I looked at him, I just couldn't believe how grown up he looked. And so I talk about on that journaling card about how grown up he is and how it's still a little strange to have him home on Fridays and how he's really enjoying having the shorter school week. I am going to add some stamping to that card. I had the stamp from Citrus Twist that it said cheers to mornings without alarms or something like that. And it was a long sentiment strip, but I wanted to kind of stack the words on top of each other. And because the words were so small, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to ink them up individually. So I'm just using some washi tape to cover the areas that I don't want to ink up and then pulling the washi tape off before I stamp. Okay, so moving on to the bottom of the spread, I've already talked about the photos that I collaged together with the journaling about the busy Monday evening that I had. And then I have that filler card that says feeling feeling the vibe. And I wanted to add something to that card. I really struggled with that. I don't think I included much of it in the video, but I thought about adding puffy stickers. I thought about adding some of the thickers and just nothing was really working out. And then I came across that happy thicker and it just fit really, really well in that spot. And it didn't add too much extra color because it is white. And then I just added a few floral stickers to the card just to add some extra pops of color. The stickers are in the same colors as the text on the card. So I thought that those worked out really well. Now I'm using a small alphabet set, which this is probably my most used alphabet set that I use in Project Life and also in my daily planner. But I'm just using that alpha set to put the timestamp on that photo that I took of that morning. I've been including that timestamp on each picture that I take each morning so you can see that they were taken at roughly the same time each week. And it just really helps kind of tie in week to week on how things change with the sunrise and how much daylight we have moving into fall. So that's going to wrap it up for this week's spread. I uh, hope that you enjoyed this process. If you did, I really do. Again, I know that I say this every Project Life video, but I do encourage you to either give the video a thumbs up or to leave me a comment. I really, really do use that to gauge on whether or not I should continue investing my time in these videos. And I do want to just thank you all so much for those of you who have liked or and have left comments on the videos. I can't tell you how much I enjoy reading the comments. It's always a bright spot in my day. So I really, really do appreciate it so, so much. So again, here are the still shots. If you have any questions about any of the techniques that I use, any of the products that I use, or just anything in general, please let me know. I am planning on recording a scrap chat video of a new series that I'm going to be launching on my channel about how I stay organized with Project Life. That was in a big part to one of my subscribers, Donna. She has been asking some really great questions and I definitely want to take time to put together a video series to hopefully help anyone who is thinking about diving into this project because I greatly enjoy it and did not do it for such a long time because I was so overwhelmed with how to get started and how to stay organized. So that will be coming soon. And please let me know if you have any questions and I will be back again soon. So thank you again all so much for watching.